Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 16 of the Leak Code November Daily Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me in Discord. Let me know what you think about today's farm. Cave smallest number in multiplication table. Okay, so, okay, one, two, three, four, okay. So, given what is M, okay, M by N, so what, what's M? I guess it just doesn't matter. Uh, what was N columns? And cave smallest number, okay. Uh, so brute force is not going to be good enough, and of course, even um, even something like a heap is not going to be fast enough because, uh, if k, um, you know, if k can be big, then we yeah. So a naive algorithm about heaps, and you cannot even generate all the numbers. Um, yeah, they're not fast enough because a heap would take m times n times log. M times N or something like that, or, mm, or or at least like log K maybe. But either way, since that can be three or nine t times 10 to the eighth, that's gonna be too big. Um, okay, so that means that we have to play around with a different strategy then. Um, can The thing is, we so we are able to do this in log N time or N log N time or something like that if we have an algorithm for it. And of course, the linear time would be good enough. Um, I'm also going to relabel this as R and C because I just like that to be more less confusing. And know that this is symmetric, right? Cause so given that R and C, it doesn't really matter which direction it goes because, I mean, that's how just how these things work. Um, but to be honest, I don't know if I, I have any good patterns. So one thing that I would like to do is, and I, I don't know that I've, I'm not going to look up where I solved this one, but I don't have any recollection in, in, in either in either case. So I usually have a piece of paper ready and pencil ready. And I would write out or draw out and see if I could figure out patterns. Um, and pattern matching is really just like if you have a lot of experience, you just kind of remember stuff that you've seen before. But without doing that, I'm going to try to do what I can on screen and just try to figure out like, okay, how, how do I see a pattern, right? Uh, so 7, da, 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 8, 10, 12, 14, um, 12, 15, uh, 21, right? Um, okay, so there is, mm, so then you, the idea is that you go, uh, the, just looking at this, you go do, 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 four, six, six, oh no, four, five, six, 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 seven, eight, nine, ten, and so forth. Um, then the question is, so if you're going to do one number at a time, it's going to be too slow. But if we're able to skip a good amount of numbers every time, maybe we can do some kind of square root type algorithm where the square root of m times n, of course, will be just n or m, right? Roughly speaking, assuming this is a square, of course, um, with our loss of generosity. Um, hmm. Hmm. I mean, one thing that we would say is that these numbers are not random, right? There is a pattern to them in the sense that, you know, these are all multiples of one, multiples of two, and multiples of three, of course. That's in the problem. Um, so then the question is, okay. Then it becomes... Hmm, can we do binary search on the row, right? I think we can, because if we have a number, if we have a number, we can get how many numbers are smaller than it. I think that's it actually, right? Um, so basically, given a number x, let's say we have, eh, let's try, let's say we have, we're trying a number six, right? Here, then we can see how many numbers are less than six? Well, or something like that, maybe off by one, but six or uh, smaller than six, say. So there are five numbers smaller than six. There are two numbers smaller than six and one number smaller than six. So then this is that eight numbers are smaller than and smaller than six. Um, and, and so that means that, um, you know, yeah. Right, so I think that's pretty much the idea behind here, um, because then now we go okay. Well, we're looking for k. Then we just try to get 
um, the lower bound of this number, basically, uh, where because you know if you draw seven. What is seven, right? Seven. Well, this one, there's six numbers smaller than seven. There's still two. Uh, oh no, there's three numbers smaller than uh, two numbers. So then now you have the eleven numbers are uh, smaller than seven. And if k is like nine, or if k is nine to eleven, this will be true, right? This will be six, right? So something like that. So I think now we have an idea. I think we should be able to, you know, we're good to go, um, because now. Um, because the the and I actually don't do this enough on video, which I um should have to be honest. Um, and one more thing I would say is I'm obviously solving these lives, so if it's a little bit slow, fast forward. Though if you're here at this point, maybe maybe uh it's too late for that. But but that said, so the way that I would think about it is that okay, right? So what are the what are the possible numbers, right? Um. Hmm. Yeah, so the biggest number in the last corner is if it has 3 times 10 and to the 4th rows and 3 times 10 to the 4th columns. And of course, that's going to be, like I said, 9, um, nine times 10 to the 8, right? Um, and of course, that's just about 1 times 10 to the 9, which of course is 2 to the 30-ish, give or take, right? So that means that the max number is about two to the dirty. I'm not using any calculator here. Roughly speaking, max is equal. To, and when we do binary search, this will take about 30, up, 30 iterations. And each iteration will take three times 10 to the fourth time at most. So that means that this is about nine times 10 to the fifth, which is, should be fast enough. So that would be my analysis on whether I, I will be good enough to start coding. Sometimes I get coding a little bit just to get a feel for it. But here, I just want to at least make sure that I am within a reasonable range. And given these math, it seems like I'm in a reasonable range. So I am going to be good to start going. And that's what I'm going to start doing. So yeah, so the smallest number is one, right? So the, the smallest number is one. The biggest number is going to be uh, literally just all times C inclusive, um, right? And for the sake of making it easier, um, we want to say R is the smaller dimension with our laws of generality. Um, and if that's not the case, then we can say if R is greater than C, R C is equal to C R, right? So we can just do that real quick. Um, yeah. And and now this 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 is standard binary search. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm not gonna go over binary search too much in this video, though. Even though I usually do, but so f I I need to make it my own or its own video because I feel like I say that a lot. But uh, but this is um, which make what was I was gonna say. This is uh, inclusive range. Um, so then here, that's why they're together. So yeah. So now if count of mid is, let's see, right? Let's see what, if it is, hmm. how, how do I want to express it precisely? So this is the part where sometimes you get messed up. So that's why I'm trying to slow down and be correct. So if K is, and we have to also define this. I mean, I gave a rough sketch of what I wanted to do, but but I think we have to define this precisely. And count, let's just say we have a dev count of x returns um, the number the number of numbers that are strictly less than x. Just to be clear, uh, let's pass this for now. And then if this number is bigger than k. Well, what, what happens if it's bigger than k? Then, then we want to move. Then the 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 answer is a bigger number, um, and this is not a possible number, right? Because if the number is bigger than k, then wait, sorry, maybe I mixed it up. So uh, let me. So if the number is bigger than k, that means that k is in the smaller half. So actually, yeah, if this, then uh, I, I messed that up. Sorry, friends, don't, don't want to be confusing. Then we want to be mid. Uh, can it be inclusive? Oh, sorry, is it? So my my thinking here now is, is it mid or mid minus one, right? Um, what happens to the mid? 
is made a possible answer. Well, if the count of this number is greater than k, then no, it cannot be a possible answer. So I have to do this. And then else left is equal to mid um, because it is less than or equal to. Okay, yeah. Um, and of course, if we do it this way, then we have to add plus one. And then at the way end, we just return left. And that's pretty much it. Of course, you have to write this. And this this part is um, should be at this point easier. So we start with count is equal to zero for i in range of uh, from one to r plus one, because we want to be inclusive. And then here we add, that's how, how do I do the math? So r times c, um, divided by x or something like that. Is that correct? Let me, let me think about this. I may be off by one here. So so I'm point, I usually, the way that I do it is just thinking about give, using an example, right? Uh, an example would, would get me a little bit um, because I can validate an example much easier. So for example, if x is equal to say six and r is equal to two, c is c is equal to three, then we have, um, so then this is equal to six and this would give me one number that's smaller, which is already not true. So I'm just really wrong here because here in theory, you have two, four and six as the two, the second row. Um, actually, this is I, but nonetheless, um, so this is I, I should be two. And we were looking for six. This should give me three, but hmm, how do I, do? I think I just mixed it up. So what we want then instead, um, I, did, I think I just wrote something that felt natural, but sometimes you're wrong. That's why you validate these things. But yeah, but how many, so you want to count how many numbers are there that are less than six, right? So that is just x, the, um, we know the i, um, the gaps between them. So now, um, how do we get c into it? Well, oh yeah, yeah. So it's either, so it's either this number or the C, right? So here, um, because if if a number, for example, if X is four, then then we get rid of the stuff to the right. And if, um, but however, we have to, because we said this is strictly less than, we have to do some math of off by one, because if this is four, two and four will return two for this formula. So actually we want something, we want to round down even a little bit. Um, and then C is just, obviously if you ran out of numbers, like with, for example, if this is, well, this, if this is six, this will return two, which is correct. And if this is seven, this will return three, which includes all of them. But if this is like 200 or 2000, as I typed, um, this would return still only three. So I think we're good here. Um, and then now we return C. So yeah. And a lot of the things that I talked about kind of slowly, uh, uh, as I said, I was like, I'm wow. But before I, f I debug this, um, I actually, sometimes you see people, especially me on stream, sometimes I do, I go for it really fast. Um, but that, that's still my thought process. It's just that with the experience, I'm able to kind of come through it much quicker. Um, but yeah, but that said, I did get a wrong answer. So, uh, or at least wrong example. Let's see if there's just this one or not. Uh, what is this one? Mm, yeah, it may be that I, I got the, I might be off by one actually, um, because this is, this is K indexed, like K equals five is actually K equals four. So, um, because I, I use zero index, um, because the first number has zero number less than it, right? Okay. So that, that should be good. Um, or is it dong, dong, dong. Let's try some uh, numbers. And then let's spin them. Uh, we, we are cheating a little bit in the sense that, obviously, we would have to calculate these answers. Um, but, but that said, if you have enough time and you're not so confident, um, I, 
Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, so one thing is that lead code will give you the wrong answers sometimes um, in that they'll tell you what the right answer is, right? But if you don't have access to that, if you're doing code forces, for example, um, they just give you a wrong answer. You don't know how. So the thing that you can do is that you can you can just write a brute force uh, vertifier to be like, okay, let, let's at least check some examples, some random examples, some big examples to see if it works and then do it, right? Um, so those are the right strategies I would recommend. Um, I think one thing I would say is that, oh, look, I did it a year ago. Why did I do it in Java? Hmm. Don't know why, actually. Um, but but I would say, uh, much slower in Python, even though I beat 90% of solutions. But um, yeah, I would say this kind of problem is very prone to being on interviews. So definitely practice it, review it. Um, I don't know how to phrase it. Uh, I, I know people say it as kind of bi binary search on the answer, which is kind of true, but I don't generally think about it like that per se. Um, so I don't know, I, but I don't know how to phrase it either. What did I do last time? What did past that? Okay, past that did roughly the same thing, but then he got a wrong answer once. So why did he get a wrong answer once? I got an off by one. Uh, hmm, don't know how he got an off by one. Hmm. See, but I think that's that's the thing where um, oh, I did this cheating thing because I wasn't sure. But, so so there was a time, even when I was on stream, um, I wasn't very careful with off by ones. So that's why um, that's why I really we did everything in binary search. Uh, but now you can see that this is much more precise. But yeah, uh, I already did the complexity, like I said. Um, this is going to be O of, so this loop is going to be O of all time, or, or, sorry, O of all, yeah, actually, no, no, this is O of all time because there's an O of all loop, right? Um, and of course, R is technically of min of R and C because we swapped them in, in the middle uh, earlier on. And then, of course, this is just, um, the max number is going to be, R times C, and then we take the log of that because we're using binary search. So th there's your answer, um, log of R times C times, and this is of course, uh, assuming that R is less than C, this is actually just, um, this actually uh, reduces to log of C kind of, in the sense that it is a constant on top. Um, but, but yeah, so this is, so if you really want to stay in a cool way, this is kind of C log C, if you will, um, roughly speaking, right? Uh, and in terms of space, this is O of one space, I think. I don't think I did anything with space. So yeah, um, that's pretty much all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Hit the like button, the subscribe button. Join me on Discord. Let me know what you think. Uh, I didn't remember this problem, to be honest. Uh, so I, I would say I took an extra minute or two in the beginning, but, uh, but not so bad. Um, yeah. Uh, cool. Let, well, that's all I have. Stay good. Stay healthy. Oh, like I said, definitely get to be good at, the, uh, at problems like this. These kind of problems have been coming up more and more in interviews that I, I hear about. Um, and even though this is a hard, I think it's probably no longer hard, to be honest. I wish it's a little bit slow. Um, I mean, it's still not easy, and it's still maybe a harder medium. But it probably, you know, I mean, these things just get harder these days. So, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. Stay good. Stay healthy to good mental health. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye.